The Birdcage is a great movie. I know that's a weighty thesis statement right there. This movie, it's a good movie. But you know what? Yeah, I think it does have to be the thesis for this video. Because if you remember The Birdcage vaguely from when you watched half of it one time at 3pm on a Sunday when it was on AMC, you might think it's just this unassuming, kind of funny movie about gay men. Haha, ha, Nathan Lane's in a dress. That's silly. But I don't think of The Birdcage like that. I see a movie that says something about identity, honesty, and happiness while also being funny as hell. So without further ado, here is The Birdcage. A quick synopsis to jog your memory, or if you're like me and watch commentary videos when you haven't even seen the movie it's about, entirely build your memory. May I take your purse as usual, or for the first time? Armand Goldman owns and lives above a drag bar called The Birdcage. His partner Albert performs at the bar and lives with him and their live-in maid, Agador. Armand has a son, Val, the result of a one-night stand with Val's mother, Catherine. Val comes by one night to let Armand know he's asking his girlfriend Barbara to marry him. Barbara's father is a Republican senator, Kevin Keeley, who is in the middle of a scandal as his fellow senator is found dead in the bed of an underage prostitute. Barbara and her mother Louise convince the senator to come down to meet Val's family to avoid the press circling his house. Barbara tells her parents Armand is a straight cultural attaché to Greece. Armand et al. try to straighten up the apartment. After a stressful back and forth of trying to convince Albert to get out of the house for a while since he can't pass straight, Albert locks himself in his room. Armand convinces Catherine to come over to pretend to be his wife. The senator and Louise arrive, Armand introduces himself as Armand Coleman, Catherine is stuck in traffic, and finally Albert emerges as Mrs. Coleman. Armand leaves a note on the door telling Catherine not to come in to avoid confusion, but two reporters who follow the senator take it, thinking nothing of it. The ruse works fairly well for a while, until Catherine walks in. Val reveals the truth, and just as the senator, Louise, and Barbara are about to leave, they open the door to photographers. Realizing they can't leave unnoticed, Albert comes up with the idea to dress them in drag and have them leave with the other performers at the end of the night. They succeed, we cut to Val and Barbara's wedding, the end. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to acknowledge that the birdcage has issues. And you might think it's odd to bring up these issues during a video about how great this movie is, but here's the thing. If I didn't tell you, I would be doing a disservice to this film. Think of it this way. Everyone has at least one family member or even friend with some problematic tendencies. Maybe they're a racist or homophobic or transphobic. But other than that, they're good. They're nice in general and you still love them. Say you invite another friend over to a family dinner and you know the problem relative will be there. You know they're a good person, but you know if your friend witnesses them being problematic with no context, that will sour the whole event. To avoid upsetting your friend, you tell them before the dinner, Look, Uncle Joe is really nice, and he probably won't do anything tonight, but just be aware that he is blank. It doesn't make that problematic aspect of your relative any better, but it tells your friend, I know, it's shitty, but it's only a small part of who they are. That's what I'm doing with the birdcage. So the birdcage has an interesting relationship to race. It's not a huge part of the movie, and I doubt the writers or director really thought much about it, but it certainly plays its part. And My father was the shaman of his tribe, okay? It's not a great part. Now, I know you're here for the Hank Azaria drama. You know he plays Apu and somehow still defends that, and trust me, we will get there. But let's start with an appetizer. There's a much smaller instance of race relations toward the beginning of the movie. Senator Jackson is part of the Coalition for Moral Order, a conservative think tank that believes Abortioner and marriage. It's a wonderful show. It's the most intelligent show on television. It would not exist if politicians didn't make laws to protect them. And naturally, he gets that group and the senator in hot water when he died in the bed of an underage black whore. Which, honestly, is, and I swear the pun is not intended, a pretty dark joke. And it is played for a joke. Well, he looked kind of funny, but he was smiling, so I didn't worry. I mean, this is a minor sex worker, so at the absolute best, she just chose to make money as a sex worker and doesn't have an adult in her life to prevent her from doing that until she turns 18 at least. At the worst, look, this video is only so long, so we're not gonna get into that. But the fact remains, the senator mentions she is... A prostitute? No. A minor? And black? 
By mentioning her blackness, he implies it's part of the problem. Now, I can hear the far-off cries of YouTube comments saying, well, he was just presenting the facts. She is black, she is under 18, she is a sex worker. But, you see, I'm gonna let you in on a secret. It's just amazing. You'll never believe it. This is a movie. Someone wrote this movie. These are not real things that happened. So, this character could be white, Chinese, South Asian, Libyan, anyone at all. And, you know, maybe somehow the casting director just happened to want to cast Trina McGee as this character, and well, what do you know, she's black. Cool. But you still don't have to mention her blackness as part of a laundry list of reasons the bad thing the senator did is bad. Or, if you do, you can throw in some quip about how that only matters because the coalition or its constituents are mostly racist. Another racist element that I didn't notice until very recently is that the Keeleys are told Armand's last name is Coleman instead of what it actually is, Goldman. Now, I had remembered it being Armand who told them that his last name is Coleman, but it turns out it was Barbara. This boy, what's his father's name? Armand? Coleman? And this is explicitly done because Goldman sounds more Jewish than Coleman. Speaking of Jewish, mm -hmm. Barbara told her parents her last name is Coleman. If Armand or even Val had told the Keeleys their last name was Coleman, or had told Barbara to tell them that, it would have been understandable. They're Jewish, and if they thought a Republican senator wouldn't approve of that, their wanting to hide that as part of the entire ruse would make sense. But since it seems like Barbara just decides that on the fly, it's a bit more... worrisome. Presumably, since Barbara's dating Val, she's not anti-Semitic, but since she's the one who tells her parents the name's Coleman, it makes it seem more obvious that the senator himself, not just his constituents or the coalition, is racist. It implies she was essentially thinking, oh shit, dad doesn't like Jews, Coleman's not gonna work, how about Coleman? But the worst part has to be Agador. Now, don't get me wrong, I love Agador. He's funny, he's caring, he's extra, but... My Guatemalan is... He's not perfect. As I said before, Agador is played by Hank Azaria, who also plays... Thank you for coming! I'll see you in hell! Apu on The Simpsons. And I'm not going to dive into that incredibly deep and festering pool. If you want to, please check out The Problem with Apu. But it is relevant here because the humor of Agador is at least partially from his accent. And like I said before, this is a movie. Every character trait is a choice. Someone somewhere said, you know what would be funny? Hank Azaria does a vaguely Hispanic accent. Because he could have been a white American. He could have acted the same, but been from America or Britain or Ireland or a plethora of other places with any number of accents or backgrounds. But they chose to make him Guatemalan. On a related note, The Birdcage does suffer a bit from having straight actors play gay characters. Robin Williams was straight, as far as we can tell. He was married to three women, he never gave the public any reason to think he was bi or pan. Well... And look, I'm not saying this is a certified grade-A issue with the film. Like, Hank Azaria playing a thickly accented Guatemalan for chuckles, pretty much anyone who isn't furiously typing YouTube comment diatribes about how they don't even see race would see that that's an issue. Straight actor playing gay character? Eh... At the very least, if it is an issue, it's not one we're over yet. We've had straights playing gays in Bohemian Rhapsody, The Imitation Game, and Modern Family. And I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong for a straight person to play a gay person, as long as the portrayal isn't a caricature or offensive. Like, if Robin Williams had been in Albert's role, as the man so furiously gay it was easier to have him play a woman than a straight man, it'd definitely be worse. And I promise my intention with this video wasn't just to shit all over Hank Azaria, but... Oh, I'm gonna look like a fag. Maybe, but you look like a fag in a uniform. He isn't just playing being Guatemalan for laughs. He is a caricature of a gay man. And I can hear the comments now, but Albert's just as stereotypically gay as Agador. What, is that okay just because Nathan Lane's gay? Yes. See, Nathan Lane wasn't exactly a down-as-luck actor at this point. He wasn't struggling to make ends meet. If he had looked at the script and thought Albert was a terrible caricature that had set gay rights back even further and went against his principles, he was absolutely in the position to turn down the role. But he didn't. Hank Azaria, being straight, didn't have the authority to decide whether Agador was a great or horrible portrayal of a gay man. It'd be like asking me to play Miles Morales in Into the Spider-Verse. I'm not a black teenage boy, so I'm completely unable to say whether the character's experiences ring true in the way I would portray him. 
and honestly, the questions posed by the casting choices fit in pretty neatly with the main conceit of the birdcage, which is... performance. Now, obviously, there are plenty of performances in the birdcage. Albert performs as Starina, Agador and Armand play piano, the group performs in drag to escape through the reporters, but really a performance is going on during most of the movie, and two different types of performances are justified by the film. The first is... Performance for Family. We first see this type of performance when Agador gives Albert Pirin capsules. If it wasn't for the Pirin tablets, uh, I don't think I could go on. What the hell are Pirin tablets? He's aspirin with the A and the S is scraped off. Oh my god, what a brilliant idea. Throughout the movie, we see that Albert gets stage fright and is generally somewhat anxious. Once he's performing, whether at the birdcage or for the Keeleys, he's pretty calm, but before it, he becomes angry and anxious. The Pirin capsules are a placebo to help him feel less anxious. Agador is using the aspirin as a prop to help Albert's fear and stress. When you hear that someone is performing, or that something is performative, it has a connotation of dishonesty and immorality. It's bad to pretend to be someone or something you aren't. You should be entirely truthful. But the message of the birdcage is that life sometimes requires performances. And I'm not talking about performing in drag or singing. When Val tries to convince Armand to pretend to be straight, Armand is naturally offended. He says, I don't want to be somebody else. Val points out that when he was a boy, Armand told him if his teacher asked who his dad was, he should say he's a businessman. Armand replies, You're a baby. Miss Donovan was a small-minded idiot. I didn't want you to get hurt. It's different now. You're a man. I can still get hurt. Armand wants to live proudly as a gay man who owns a drag bar. He wants to be himself in a community that doesn't expect him to be someone else. But when he sees that Val will suffer if Barbara's parents see the truth, his desire to protect his son supersedes his desire to express himself freely. He understands he must put on this performance to help Val. The idea of hiding an aspect of your identity from a family member, or in this case soon-to-be family members, may seem cruel or dishonest to many people, especially cis straight people. This is your family. These are people you trust. Why would you hide a huge part of yourself from them? The concept of coming out as gay or any sexual orientation other than straight is often seen by straight people as a one-time deal. You climb the highest rooftop, gather everyone you know, and shout, I'm gay, and that's it. Everyone knows, and that's all you have to do. But no. For starters, you're going to encounter other people who won't necessarily need to know you're gay. The cashier at 7-Eleven doesn't need to know you're gay. Your bank teller doesn't need to know you're gay. The person who lives two apartments over doesn't need to know you're gay. But even beyond that, maybe your grandma is homophobic. Maybe not even that homophobic, just enough that she probably wouldn't love it if you came out to her. Maybe you have a good relationship with her, and you suspect if she knew you were gay, that relationship would fall apart, or at least change. Maybe you think it's preferable to keep your relationship with her by performing straightness, or at least concealing gayness, instead of telling her the truth and ruining the relationship. And as incongruous as it seems to perform for family, we can see the alternative in how Val acts. Now, I don't think the birdcage, as is intended to be seen, views Val as immoral for making Armand and Albert perform straightness. We get some scenes of Armand being upset, Fuck the senator, I don't give a damn what he thinks. Or being mad at Val, Do you want me to be someone else? But I think if the movie were trying to say Val was wrong for doing this, we'd see him apologize to his family. And he doesn't. You can tell he's not exactly thrilled he has to ask this of them, but he's not sorry, and he doesn't really consider any alternatives. In a metatextual way, though, I think the movie is at least hinting at Val being in the wrong. Every other character actively chooses to perform at some point in the movie. Armand fakes spraining his ankle to keep Albert from the house, Albert chooses to emerge as Mrs. Coleman, Agador chooses to affect an accent and become a fancy butler. Barbara spins her web about the Goldman's names and identities. Sandra Keeley lies to the reporters about where he's going in a politically smarmy way. Louise comes up with the idea to visit Val's family as a way of making the media see them as wholesome. Yes, Val does help the club employees straighten up the apartment, but even then, Louise is the one who came up with the idea of coming down there. And he doesn't even want to decorate the set, as it were. Too much? Don't. And. The apartment ends up austere, with only a few decorations, but it would have made sense to have more art and decor, just not art that could be read as gay. But Val is straightforward. He comes in, says what he needs to happen, removes what's wrong, adds nothing else, and lets the dinner happen around him. 
Everyone else is working toward the illusion. Armand is making jokes, Agador is cooking, Albert is discussing politics, Val is... there. In a way, he is the straight man, because he's the straight man. But he also is really the antagonist. He's the reason the status quo has changed. He upsets the happy lives of his family to accomplish his goals. But more broadly, Val is less of an antagonist and more like the agent of the antagonist, which is... society. Oddly enough, for a movie primarily focused on two gay men, the pressures of society are mostly seen with the Keeleys, especially toward the beginning of the film. As a politician, Kevin is deeply concerned about what the public thinks of him and his family, and Louise is his right-hand woman, more or less steering him, whether it's away from Candy or toward the Goldmans. Their desire to meet the parents isn't for the usual reasons of wanting to get closer to the people who will be your family and celebrating a happy occasion, but for PR. It would restore your image! A wedding is hope, and a white wedding is family and morality and tradition. There's the cover of People and Time and Newsweek right there. Much like they plan on performing at the dinner as innocent bystanders who barely knew Senator Jackson, the Keeleys want to use Val and Barbara's wedding as a political event. During the dinner, Kevin is the first to bring up politics. As if anyone, Jews, Muslims, whatever, would mind if their children prayed in the classroom. He's not content to simply have a peaceful meal with people he barely knows. He needs to push his agenda. His entirely ignorant agenda. I think homosexuality. Lots more ice for you. Lots more ice, Dad. One of the things that's weakening this country. As Kevin comes to suspect the Coleman's are hiding something, he isn't concerned that Barbara is marrying into a family he distrusts and finds controlling because... I don't think he's terrible in that way. I mean, he's not going to get mixed up in some stupid scandal. Louise says... You're not worried about Barbara. All you think about is your career. To which Kevin replies... You're just as worried about my career as I am. If the scandal didn't exist, if Kevin didn't care about what society thinks about him and his family, he seemingly wouldn't approve of the marriage. Sure, once the ruse is revealed, he tries to leave, but if the ruse had worked perfectly, he seemingly would have let Barbara marry Val, even though he thought him and Armand are pretentious and have contempt for Mrs. Coleman. And the nature of how the Colemans are bad in his eyes determines his and Louise's opinions of letting it go forward. See, when the bad thing about the Colemans is that Armand and Val are snooty Europeans who try to silence the women and their family, that's acceptable. He'd prefer that weren't the case, and maybe if he didn't need Barbara to get married to mitigate the scandal, he'd act differently, but eh, what are you gonna do? But when the bad thing about the Colemans is that they're actually the Goldmans, and they're a gay couple, that's too much. Wedding's off. Because the public isn't gonna know if Barbara or Mrs. Coleman are kept quiet and effectively emotionally abused. As long as Val is the kind of guy who won't get into a scandal like Senator Jackson, Senator Keeley's career will remain intact, regardless of what happens to his daughter. But if the public discovers she's marrying the son of two gay Jewish men, conservative voters would hate him. His fellow senators would try to distance themselves from him, just like he tries to do with Jackson. Earlier in the birdcage, when Kevin and Senator Jackson are on a news show, Jackson says, When I and Senator Keeley here founded the Coalition for Moral Order, this it was to express moral rather, rather than political like views. Senator Jackson is trying to say that morality is political. For Kevin, his politics dictate his morality. He and Jackson try to spin it as the opposite, that they're just trying to make everyone pure, and coincidentally, the Republicans seem to like that, but as seen in how Kevin deals with his opinions of the Colemans, and then Goldmans, we learn that his morality is a performance. Even if he has real beliefs about what is right and wrong, he will conceal them. He'll smile and nod if it means restoring his reputation. Now, you would think the Birdcage would feature Armand and Albert performing as straight for society to protect themselves, but really, apart from the aforementioned scene where Armand told Val to tell his teacher he's a businessman, we don't get that. The Birdcage mentions frequently that the club is located in South Beach, and while it's not outright stated that it's a gay mecca, it's implied. They're, they're at their vacation house in South Beach. Oh, is that like Palm Beach? It's close. South Beach is part of Miami and has been a popular home and vacation destination for LGBT people since the 80s. The Birdcage itself is actually the Carlisle Hotel in South Beach. The exterior shots of bustling South Beach don't show many gay or lesbian couples per se, just young, attractive people. But we know that the community is accepting, because we see Armand and Albert interact with the public. 
When the Schnecken beckons Albert to the bakery, the baker knows he's buying this for Val. He knows the relationships between Val, Armand, and Albert. Albert doesn't have to pretend. When Armand and Albert sit down at the restaurant, they're clearly a couple, but they don't need to perform straightness for fear of being stared at or attacked. When Armand runs after Albert when he waits for the bus to Los Copa, they sit together and hold hands. People walk by, but they're accepted. The birdcage couldn't be set in many other cities at this time. Yes, there have been gay bars and drag clubs for decades, but they were often somewhat hidden. Police routinely raided gay bars, resulting in newspapers printing lists of who had been found there and, of course, violence. While attitudes were certainly changing in the 90s, and gay bars didn't have to be quite as secretive as they had previously, anti-LGBT violence was, and unfortunately still is, a real threat. As a sanctuary and vacation spot for so many LGBT people, South Beach served as the perfect setting. If the movie had been set in, say, Milwaukee, Armand and Albert couldn't have convincingly lived the way they did publicly. And the added stress the audience would feel for them as they tried to tone things down publicly, as well as privately, for the Keeleys, would have ruined any comedy. As it is, we see in the Keeleys and the Goldmans two different reasons for performing. The Keeleys, as politicians, perform using their family as a prop to advance Kevin's career and their public image. The Goldmans, as director and star, perform for their family, to help each other out. Their public image is a true image of who they are. The Keeleys perform to the world, and the Goldmans perform to the Keeleys. While the Goldmans only need to keep up their performance for a dinner and maybe a couple more until the wedding's over, the Keeleys have been performing morality and family values for years, and will continue to do so for many more. While the Goldmans can be their authentic selves most of the time in between dinners with the in-laws, the Keeleys never stop performing. Even at the end of the dinner, after the wedding is seemingly off, Kevin says, I hope this doesn't influence your vote. And obviously a main point of the birdcage is that honesty is better than performance. But I don't think it's saying there's no room for performances, that you can't take on different personas or appearances as needed. Rather, it says that everyone performs, in one way or another, for one reason or another. Because what is a birdcage? It holds a captive bird, expected to sing and flutter and look pretty, to act in a way it otherwise wouldn't. And for much of the movie, the characters feel trapped, forced to perform to keep their jobs or help their family. But at the end, when the ruse is revealed, they're saved by one last grand performance, performing to freedom. 